No. Open the page. I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the ones take it off you. Warum? Anna Clark's about to face one of the toughest tests of her career. After just a year as head of languages at Greycourt School in Richmond-upon-Thames, she's about to conduct her first performance management observation on a teacher 20 years her senior. Habt ihr verstanden? Gut. Macht in her time, Audrey Elliott's run four languages departments. She has two years to go before retirement. Last task. Shh. John Bailey's on the case. Just tell me a bit about you and her. OK. Well, Audrey's far more experienced than I am. She oh. has been a head of department before which makes it even more difficult, I feel, for me as a new middle manager to be observing her and giving her feedback. Yeah. And I'm not sure whether there are a lot of people who feel the same as me, but it's, it is very difficult if there's somebody that, who, who has a lot more experience than you to be able to sit in that chair and... The key thing is um, that you have a professional conversation around the points that yeah. you and she have identified. Okay. If you hang on to that, that's the kind of golden thread yes. of the observation. Yeah. Greycourt's focus is GCSE CD borderlines. So, we werden hier anfangen. Audrey's targets, agreed with Anna, include ensuring the maximum engagement of pupils and concentrating on questioning techniques. Okay. Hello. Ich wohne in einem Reihenhaus. Audrey has a mixed ability year 10 German class of 32. In terms of the balance between teacher-led and student-led, what's your um, hunch about it? Possibly leading to slightly more teacher-led. There was a fair bit of it that was the students working on their own, um, but a lot of it was teacher-led. OK. Sehr gut. Und seit wann wohnt Maria hier? Seit wann wohnt sie hier? Seit zwei Jahren. Seit zwei Jahren. Sehr gut. Ausgezeichnet. Was hätte sie gern in ihrem Haus? Was hätte sie gern in ihrem Haus? Sie hat schon eine Saune und ein Schwimmbad. Was hätte sie auch gern? Ja. Ein Friedbad im Garten. Ein Freibad im Garten. Also sehr gut. I noticed that lots of the questions were single questions. Wie viele Zimmer? Teacher asks a question, mm -hmm. student gives an answer. Mm -hmm. Teacher turns around to another student mm -hmm. and asks another question. Yeah. So if you got the answer right or if you passed, you were kind of off the hook. So I wondered about the level of pressure um, that was being created by the questioning. Um, I mean, I think? thought they were... Um, they were confident in answering. Aber vielleicht auch ein bisschen gefährlicher. Ja, und am Ende... Very well done. Good. Excellent. There were very few children who did not want to answer, which I think is a good thing, because obviously the atmosphere... Yes, and they were under the pressure from the observation mm, as well, weren't exactly. they? Exactly. And so, have so many of them who were happy to respond, and who did so well, I thought was a real, really good indicator that her learning environment is a very positive one. Du bist Dieter und du bist Maria. Also. Wevel Zimmer hat dein Traumhaus? Acht. Das heißt? Mein Traumhaus hat ein Wohnzimmer, ein Esszimmer und ein Küche in Erges Shop. Was hast du im ersten Stock? Im ersten Stock habe ich eine... Under the engagement heading, is there, is there anything that you would like? I mean, I'd be interested in... in hearing how what she thinks she would be the one that would be able to comment on the on the level of engagement i think um but as far as something that she could develop regarding that i'm not i don't really know okay so we ask yeah or rather you ask i'm just going to watch yeah. <laughs> could you please work together and in five six minutes or so I'm going to ask you exactly where each person would consider their townhouse to be, okay? 
Fünf Minuten. Work together, read through. Do you feel more, less or the same level of apprehension as when we were talking earlier on? Less. Yeah, I, I mean, as a matter of fact, so do I, sort of on your behalf. It's a conversation with another adult, yes. isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a pair of reflective practitioners yes. having a, a professional conversation. And having seen the lesson, and now know what I'm going to talk about, it's very difficult when you're discussing what you're going to talk about when you haven't actually seen the thing that you're going to talk about. Yeah. As far as the participation, they were on task and they were participating for a huge part of the lesson. You made sure that you were asking all the, kids, all the students questions, that all of them had the opportunity to, um, to answer at various points during, during the lesson. Kannst du mir bitte einen ganzen Satz sagen, whole sentence? Um, sie leben. Sie hätte gerne. Sie hätte gerne in New York. In leben. New York. Leben. Leben oder wohnen. Gut. Brigitte hätte gerne in New York wohnen. Warum? Warum möchte, möchte sie gerne in New York wohnen? Warum? Jemand? Nein, zu so schwierig? Why? Why would she like to live in New York? Seb, probier mal. Because... Um, es wäre... I'm not sure. Anybody. Is there anything... I mean, how, how did you feel? Were you happy with, with the level of participation that you... that you felt was going on in the lesson? There were one or two students who... I think they get a little bit shy and they, they, they say that they haven't done whatever you've asked mm -hmm. them to do and they use that as an excuse not to perform. Mm. And I need something to bring those particularly shy children out mm -hmm. to speak, just to raise their confidence level. In Liverpool, Warum? Ich... Ich Weil es ein Fußballmannschaft yeah. gibt? Ja. Yeah. Ja, das habe ich gedacht, ja? Sie sag, weil es, weil es eine Fußballmannschaft gibt. Eine Fußballmannschaft. So. Gut, und das ist dein Lieblingsfußballmannschaft, ja? Stimmt das? Your favorite. Okay. Where's Sam? Am liebsten würde ich auf einer Insel ganz in der Nähe von dem Japan. Es wäre natürlich schon aus hier, aber dafür viel gesünder. Mein Insel leben irgendwo im Atlantik über viel warm. Excellent, well done. I mean, one thing it could have been worth mentioning there would be to do with why you have to be able to justify and give opinions about things and actually link that back to the GCSE. Yes. Criteria. I mean, at this stage in year ten, they're not very familiar with no. that. So I think that's something that you that happens as you, as you go through the yeah. through the course. Um, but, the, but that would be a good way to, to to bring that in then. And I did like when one of the students was was struggling. You, d you gave an option or a possible answer, yes. and then they felt quite happy to just adapt that and to change it. Um, is there anything that you feel that that you'd like to? sort of develop more or that you're particularly happy with or or not? I'm not sure it's a case of developing more really. What well, you do feel very conscious when it's such a large class. Mm -hmm. The amount sheer amount of time it takes mm. to include everyone. If there if there are tasks in the lesson which enable the students to be working on their own, then it frees you up to be able to then yes. go around and help individuals. Um, Which is, I think that's, yeah, it's a good point, and I think that's where group work comes into mm -hmm. that. But, again, you're going back to class size, mm -hmm. it's just not, you know, it's, it's the least conducive mm. subject to have large groups in a GCSE yes. class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dominic! Nein? OK. Tim? Because, I mean, something that I was thinking could have been an, an, 
a nice activity for them to do would be a writing task which is also linked to that yes. and then they could have performed in pairs or in small yes. groups. That probably um, is a good thing to develop into the next lesson. Yeah. Which would give the sort of, um, you know, the students who, who aren't as happy with doing that kind of activity yeah. would have the support there in the example, yeah. but it gives opportunities for those more imaginative and daredevil students yes, to do something a little bit different. And do you feel that the areas that we looked at today, by looking at those and developing those further, that you will help yourself achieve that, that oh, I target? Think, yes, I do think so, yes, thank you for that. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I hope you found it as helpful uh, as I did. I really enjoyed watching the lesson and uh, thank you. I hope the feed feedback's been uh, yes, helpful as well. very helpful, thank you. With Audrey's many years running departments, Anna's own management style eventually becomes an issue, especially the question of class size. 25% of that curriculum is speaking. And, and you know, I, I don't know how I can get round them all to, do, to give them that much time that is deserved. If you put yourself in her shoes just for a minute, what could she do for you? Fight more. <laughs> OK, so, so one of the jobs... Be tougher. So one of the jobs ahead of the department is to fight more and fight I for resources. I think so. You have to fight for your corner. That's one thing I have learned in all my schools. I mean, I used to be married. I am married to what used to be a head teacher, so I probably am a little bit more foolhardy and headlong than most, but, uh, you know, I know that that's what they think. You fight for your corner. And with reviews like this, they can be a put-upon thing. They can be another box to check and another thing to go through. Or they yeah. can be a really useful opportunity to have a professional discussion. Yes, I think like, so. You're stuck with these big groups. What can you do about it? Yeah. Um, uh, do you want to go and look at some rooms where there's people doing group work and finding out what else is being done in the school? I think by doing that with large groups, you, you capitulate, and things will never improve if you capitulate. If I'm finding out fantastic ways of dealing with it, then people are going to come to me and say, oh, we can stick another three in there, no problem. And I know that might sound very naive, but we're not helping those children, and we're accepting it. And I'm really sorry, but we shouldn't be accepting it for their benefit, not for ours. I mean, we're paid for all this. We're paid to work hard and jump through hoops. <laughs> You are under quite a lot of pressure, weren't you, there? Because that's an experienced colleague... Yeah. Um, ..who's got really strong views. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, you were, that we were being told in code was um, head of department must fight for more uh, equipment, time and space for their department, mm -hmm. and then they might get a bit more time of day from me. That, that, that's probably putting... Mm. That might be putting it a bit strongly. That, yeah. That was part of what was general, going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think... There's, you, there's only so many times you can ask things and be told no. <laughs> Yes. And there is a point when I have complained about things and, and I've just been told no. And, and I think I'm very much of the opinion that if that happens, then you just get on with it and you make the best of it. An aspect of being a head of a department is you're between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Because mm. what's your primary unit? Is it this team that you're building mm. to make an excellent department? Um, or is it, is it building the school as an excellent school, yeah. school and, mm -hmm. and impressive in national terms? Yeah. So oh, th those are big issues, aren't they? Mm, yeah, very. Ones which I don't feel I can quite come to terms with and... <laughs> ..today. <laughs> <laughs>